Today on Grow It, I'm going to show you how you can use plants to fertilize your garden beds. When I say we're going to use plants to fertilize our beds, I don't just mean any old plants. There are very specific kind of plants that are categorized in gardening and agriculture as green manures or cover crops. Cover crops perform a variety of different functions, including fertilization, improving soil structure and protecting soil from erosion. Leguminous green manures such as clover and vetch contain nitrogen fixing symbiotic bacteria in the root nodules and this is what fixes atmospheric nitrogen into a form that plants can use. If you haven't heard the term nitrogen fixation before, this is an essential process for life in which nitrogen gas from the air is converted into ammonia in the soil by a group of microorganisms called diazotrophs. These include bacteria that live in symbiosis with the plant, which means that they have a relationship that is mutually beneficial to both the bacteria and the plant. Once the nitrogen has been taken from the air into the soil, the plant can then use this nitrogen for growth. Depending on the cover crop that you grow, the amount of nitrogen released back into the soil can range between 4 and 22 grams per square metre. With green manure use, the amount of nitrogen that you can make available to the succeeding crop, so the next one that goes into your bed, is between 40 and 60% of the total nitrogen content of the green manure crop, which is an absolute load. The way this works is that once your cover crop grows and it matures, you can cut it back and incorporate it into your soil, and this releases all of that nitrogen into the bed for the next succeeding crops. All of this means that you can use less non-organic chemical fertilizers in your garden which is great for everyone apart from those more obvious benefits you can also let some green manures flower so that's obviously really great for pollinators such as bees and butterflies um, it gives them a good source of forage and they're also a really good haven for predatory insects like ladybirds and if you can increase the amount of ladybirds you've got in your garden that's another absolutely fantastic thing you can do because obviously they're going to eat any aphids or green flies that might be in your garden um, and that again means you can use less chemical insecticides which again is great for the local ecosystem in your garden there is quite a variety of different cover crops and normally they'll just be labelled in a packet as uh, green manure or green manure winter mix for ones that specifically go over winter or um, you could even just go and hunt out the specific varieties that you want just like I do um, but yeah they're usually just a mix of clover, mustard seeds, beans, there's all sorts of different things that they'll mix in there or like I say find a nice variety like red clover or white clover. Let's go and get these into the ground and on the way. And here we go, before we get started, check this out. One of my amazing pumpkins I grew this year. If you haven't checked out my video already on how to grow pumpkins and my amazing Daring Pigeon Rescue, make sure you go back and check that out. Um, I'll leave a link in the description because these have been absolutely fantastic to grow. So I'd really recommend having a go at this yourself next year. I'm also going to be giving away the seeds for this variety because I grew quite a few of these pumpkins. I've got loads of seeds, so I'm going to be giving these away on my Instagram. Um, I'll leave a link for that as well. I'll make sure there's a link in the description. So head on over there. Don't forget to follow me and uh, you can get loads of pictures and behind the scenes stuff from here as well. And I'll also make sure that there's a competition up and I give away for some of these seeds. So yeah, check that out. Amazing pumpkin, pigeon rescue. Instagram. The variety I've got is Crimson Clover, and I do think it's a bit on the late side to get the full benefit of this variety. I've been meaning to get them in for like a month now, and between the non-stop rain and the flooding, I've just not had a chance, but it's what I've got, so I'll have to make do with it. If it's specifically over winter and green manure that you need, then have a look for a winter mix, as they'll stand a better chance to last into spring. But yeah, these should be absolutely fine. Um, it's, you can do these into November, so yeah, it's only mid-October now, but yeah. Let's get these in. So this is the bed that I'm going to be using it on and it's the one that I grew my sweet corn in this year. Um, I don't know what I'm putting in it next year, I've not thought that far ahead. Uh, but all I've done to sort of prepare it, I've took any weeds out that are already in there, any big ones. Um, and it's been covered over for the last couple of weeks. Um, as you might have seen in the video, like last week or the week before, it's been uh, flooded a bit. So um, it looks like it's drained away quite nicely now, so it's ready to go in. And all I've done is given a bit of a rake over just to break up the soil on top. Um, and now we'll get those seeds just broadcast over it. Um, yeah, let's get going. So all I'm doing is just pouring them into my hand and you just want to broadcast them just over the area. Give it a good covering. I've got about 120 grams of this crimson clover in this tub just as a bit of a guide as to how much uh, is in there. I 
there we go, just a bit of a fine covering as you can see. Uh, all we need to do now is just give these a bit of a raking in just to protect them from any hungry birds. I can hear the robin going absolutely mental, so he's got his eye on it. Um, might just put some netting over as well, just for a bit of extra protection, just while the seed's established. But yeah, that's all there is to it, so let's get them raked in. You can now just let this get on with it and grow as much as it likes. Once it's time to use the bed for your next crop, all you need to do is cut the plants at ground level with some shears and leave them on top of the soil to wilt. A couple of days later, chop them down into the soil a bit with your spade, turn them over and then leave them for another two to three weeks for them to really break down and rot and then you can get your new plant straight in. And that's all there is to it. It's a really easy job that you can do this week and give your soil and your beds and your plants the best possible start to the next growing season in spring. And don't forget, if you do have any ideas or any tips to go with it, make sure you let me know in the comments. And even if you have a go with this yourself, let me know how you get on. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you get all of my videos and all my new videos that I'm gonna be bringing out in the next couple of weeks. See you next time.